The cross can always be done in eight moves or less. At least that's what I heard. If you have trouble solving the cross efficiently, then I'm here to help you. First of all, make sure you're solving the cross on the bottom every time. If you do it on the top, that will slow you down because you won't be able to look ahead into your first pair as easily and you'll have to do a rotation after you finish the cross. So please make sure you do the cross on the bottom. And now that we've gotten that out of the way, here are seven tips to help you with your cross. Number one, ignore the centerpieces. So this is a very basic idea, but I still see a lot of people do it. So you have to make sure that you solve the cross and then align all of the colors. So for example, here we have blue with the blue center here, and here we have orange with the orange center here. So what that means is blue goes to the right of orange. So instead of solving orange, taking out blue and then inserting blue like that, instead you can just solve blue and then move it over like that. Now that seems a little bit obvious, but then if you don't plan out your entire cross during inspection, what people tend to do is take pieces out and reinsert them on top of the correct center. What you should do instead is solve the entire cross and then align all of them with the center. All right, so here's the same cross again and we'll do the entire cross this time. So here's orange and to the right of orange, if you check the centers, should be blue. So blue can go here and to the right of blue should be red. And lastly, we have green, which goes to the right of red. Now let's do that entire cross solution. So insert the blue one, insert the red one, and then insert the green one into here. And then after we have solved the cross, you're gonna line it. Number two, the three move insert. So the three move insert is when you have a cross edge like this in the top layer. So white is facing to the side, not to the top. And then it needs to go over here and you can do this. So going over here, if the cross edge was on the right side instead, you just do the same thing with your right hand. So this is something you want to look out for during inspection. If you can do three cross edges easily and the last one just ends up like this, then no problem, you can do this very quickly. And it doesn't even feel like three moves because it's so fast. Number three, use one piece to insert another piece. So you can use the insertion of one piece in order to insert another piece at the same time. And that usually happens when you have a cross piece that can be inserted in one move. And so here we have green solved, so we want to solve blue to right here. Now, instead of doing blue like that and then doing uh, the red one like this with the three mover that I just talked about, instead you can put the red one on top of the blue one here and then move it down like that. So that is just a pattern you'll have to recognize during inspection uh, that you'll see over and over so you'll be able to become very comfortable with it. Number four, don't move the piece, move the cross. So here, let's take a look at this cross. We have all of the pieces done except for the blue one. Now, how should we insert this? So there's two ways of going about it. One is to remove the blue piece from the bottom layers and then insert it with F2. Now that's okay, but a better way to do it is instead of moving the blue piece, let's move the entire cross. Cause you know you can get the blue piece into here in one move. So you can just move the cross over, get the blue piece in there and then move the cross back. Now let's take another example and try to apply these concepts. So here again, there are three solved and we wanna solve the red one. It needs to go over here. So the thing you shouldn't do, which is the most obvious thing actually, is to take it out like that and then insert it like that. So there are two better ways to insert this actually. One of them is what I've just talked about to move the cross so you can get the red into the empty spot and then move the cross back. And the last way that is also good is to use what I talked about earlier, which is using one piece to insert another piece. So uh, you can move the blue piece uh, over like this and then insert the red and then put the blue piece back. Number five, plan out the entire cross during inspection. So ideally you want to be able to plan out the entire cross during inspection and not rely on looking at the pieces in order to do the cross anymore. Of course, this may not be possible if you have not practiced the other steps as much, but once you have an efficient cross, then this should be very easy to do with practice. So the reason that this is important is just like when you look at F2L pairs, you don't want to think about the pair that you're currently doing because that will hinder your look ahead. Same thing goes for the cross. You don't want to think about the cross because it will hinder your look ahead into the next step, which is the first F2L pair. So here, for example, uh, you want to be able to do first pair and your cross without a pause in between. And that is only possible if you can do your cross um, without thinking about it. So here we go. So first pair and the cross, and um, so I can look ahead to my first pair during the cross, and that ensures that there's no unnecessary pause in between. Number six, watch example solves. So unlike solving last layer cases or solving F2L cases, you can't really divide the cross into cases, which is why it's so hard to teach. 
uh, it just takes a lot of experience to be able to see enough cases that you can come up with a new solution every time you get a different cross, because chances are you're not going to get the same cross more than once. Uh, that's why it's important to watch example solves, so that you're not looking at specific cross solutions, but you're looking at the ideas that faster cubers have with efficient crosses and how you can achieve an efficient cross just by learning what they have to say. And with that being said, before we get to our last tip, here are some example solves. I will do a total of four example solves and I will do only the cross. So if you try to come up with your own solution by doing the scramble before I actually show my solution, then I think you'd be able to learn a lot more from this. All right, so here's the first scramble and remember to scramble white top and green front. So you can pause the video now if you want to figure out your own solution, but I'm going to talk about the solution now. So I have red here and green here. Uh, green goes to the right of red, as you can see in the centers. So I will do R prime as my first move, and then I will do these two next. So after R prime, I will probably do a D to avoid a cube rotation, then start to insert orange over here uh, because that goes opposite of red. Now on the way down for orange, uh, you should recognize this pattern and see that I can put blue on top of orange and then continue going down and insert blue. Then do a D2 to finish the cross. So here's my solution again, a little bit faster. Here's the second scramble. First of all, blue is good. So I don't necessarily have to do blue first because it's already aligned. So I could do the aligning of the cross at the end and then insert blue. That's just an idea I have right now. Um, so I could insert orange and green because orange goes to the right of green like that. So I could insert orange and green like that. And then red also goes in. So what I can do is I know red needs to go over here. Uh, so I can take red out, move the cross, and then put red back in. So now that is opposite orange and then just solve blue last. So align the cross and insert blue. So here it is again a little bit faster. All right, here's the third scramble. Okay, so I have green already here, blue here. Um, all right, what I'm gonna do is I know that I'll have to do a D move at some point to put the red one into the left of green because red goes to the left of green. Before I do that, I know that blue goes to the left of red. So I can move blue like that and now I'll have blue to the left of red and I'll just have to insert them both. So orange goes in last and I can align the cross uh, over here Put the green over here, red goes in here, blue goes in here. And lastly, just do orange. So align the cross and do orange. So here it is again, a little bit faster. And here's the last scramble. Okay, so uh, orange is good. Red is good because it can just go here across from orange. And uh, so I know that blue uh, will need to go over here because it goes to the right of orange and green will need to go over here. So um, there are a few ways I can think of to do this. So what I would probably do just because it's the most finger trick friendly is first of all, insert red, then insert blue using the three moves that I talked about. So like that. And then for green, lastly, um, I would do D2 to, to bring its spot over and then do uh, F prime to put it in and then align the cross. All right, and faster. So of course there are a lot of example solves out there to go watch. A lot of the best cubers in the world have done example solves, so you can go watch how they do their cross, but you can only get so much from watching. So this leads into the next point. Number seven, spend a few minutes per day practicing. So if you really want to improve the cross, you just need to build up an intuition of how the pieces interact with each other and how you can manipulate them so that you can get them to go in in a very few number of moves. So what I used to do is just hand scramble up the cube and see what I would do with the cross and uh, see what creative solutions I can come up with. So for example here, um, orange, green, and blue, and red here. So I could, uh, I could do blue like this, and then green like this, and then orange, and then lastly insert red like that. So then you can just scramble it up again and see how you solve the cross. And you only have to do this for a few minutes every day. It doesn't take that much, as long as you keep practicing it. So here I could do orange, then green, and then uh, insert blue like this, and then insert red like that. So it just takes practice like this. This is what I did uh, a few minutes per day a long time ago, back when I used to practice the cross a lot. And now once you get good at it, your cross solutions will be as good as the best in the world. It doesn't take so much as long as you really put time into it and you really want to get better at it. And of course, keep practicing because if you don't practice, you won't improve. And I hope your improvement goes well. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.